what is administration? Well, hey, everybody, welcome back to My Seminary Life. This week, we are kicking off the brand new class, Ministry Administration. And I, you know, I I dug it a little bit. You know, I, I kind of didn't put it over properly. I got to say, just starting things out, I think this is going to be a pretty good class. And all this week, we had to wrestle with the very word itself, administration. And that's what we're going to do today, a little word study on what is administration. If you're dropping in for the very first time, welcome. I'm Brandon Knight. I'm your host. And this is the show where I recap the things I'm studying in grad school. And I am officially halfway through, over halfway through, finishing up my Master of Arts in Ministry Studies. It's so close. This time next year, I will have graduated. And what's going to happen after that? Well, you're just going to have to stay tuned to find out. I got some ideas. It's going to be a great time. But hey, today, let's go ahead and get started on ministry administration, looking at the very word itself. What is administration? Like I said, I didn't quite properly put this class over. I think it's going to be really good. I think this class is going to be helpful in giving us an opportunity to, much like discipleship methods, reevaluate, strip down, and realize that administration, no matter the size of the church, is actually a really good thing. You know, there's a whole conversation that's going to be happening around this of professionalism. Is professionalism something that needs to be in the church? Many people would say no. John Piper would definitely say no. He's got a wonderful book on the subject. And actually, I've recently did an interview with Buddy Walk with Jesus. You can go check it out on their Facebook or wherever you get your shows. Episode's called Rage Against the Machine. I wish I could say I came up with the title. Um, And in it, we talk about when professionalism crosses the line when professionalism and proper administration and perfectionism starts to become an idol within the church. Really, uh, really, um, you know, things like perfectionism shouldn't be in a church period. But uh, what this class I think is going to do is help us realize that there is a level of professionalism that needs to take place. And actually in a couple of weeks, my good friend, Friend, boss, pastor, pastor, boss, Scott is going to be here to talk about professionalism. We've we've had some conversations before in the past, just off the cuff about uh, things about professionalism, and we have some different views on it, which is okay. So I think it should make for a good conversation on where does professionalism fall into the church, and that's going to help us, I think, better understand administration as well. Now, doing this word study on administration, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, administration can be defined as performance of executive duties. Management is a word that is very synonymous with the word administration. And dictionary.com reinforces this idea, uh, defining administration as the management of any office, business, or organization. So what we can conclude is that administration is there to uh, get additional duties done. You are the assistant to the uh, boss, CEO, manager, whatever it is, to get jobs done. You are managing the manager. However, when you get down to the etymolo- etymology of the word, which was part of our study, it, it takes on a very unique light. Ad is from the Latin meaning to or towards, and minister also comes from Latin meaning inferior, servant, priest assistant. So at the very core of this word in its Latin, this word means that you are a servant towards a priest. You are the assistant to the priest. It's it's a very religious word at its core. And when you trace the history of the use of this word, uh, what you see is that it's not really until Middle English, so a couple hundred years ago, but still, that it starts to take on more of this Uh, use of government or businesses and less of a ministry-related word. Uh, Actually, in its earliest form, the word minister is associated with being consecrated to the service of the Lord. So it's not until more recent history, again, several hundred years ago, but not until more recent history that we start to see that the word administration takes on a more business, business, business role rather than its original use, which would have meant that you are there to assist somebody 
getting ministry done. And this is the very core ad- of administration. And I think whether you're in a mega church, a multi site church, or a small group leader, or, or you are the leader of a home church, I think administration can be applied to any level of ministry. Because what's going on here is that even at its very base level, you are thinking out the logistics. You are thinking out the getting from point A to point B. You know, the pastor has written his sermon. How does he get from writing the sermon to preaching the sermon? Administration, you're planning out the worship service. How is there, how are the bills getting paid? How are all the, you know, how are the different programs and different um, ministries? How do we get VBS started? How do we do these things? That's all administration. And even at the small home church level or the small group level, administration is planning out, okay, what is our group going to study? Administration is, okay, hey, we're going to sponsor a child together. We're going to support a missionary together. Administration, logistics, planning things out. So at its core, it's not a dirty word. It has its place within the church, but it can very easily be idolized. But we move on now. My reading this week was bizarre. I had to read the table of contents of our two textbooks. Church Administration Handbook by Bruce P. Powers and Church Administration by Robert H. Welch. A few observations can be made. Uh, First, ministry administration serves the role of keeping the church functioning behind the scenes. And that's kind of the more businessy side of things. But considering the research we did on the word, administration in the church should serve the purpose of not just executing duties that keep things afloat, but the original use of the term would indicate that you are assisting the priest in service. So you're not just doing busy work. You're not just posting on Facebook to post on Facebook. You're not just sending out emails or scheduling meetings or buying snacks for the youth group snack bar. You're doing these things with the intended purpose of helping the minister get work done, of keeping the ministry a ministry. So from these table of contents, we had to conclude five areas that administration are a part of. And I think this is going to be the part of our dialogue that's going to happen the most of our dialoguing between um, students. So the five areas that I concluded are planning and programming activities. So you're the person who's putting the chili cook-off together or planning a worship night or the VBS or Maybe your small group is just going to go serve at a soup kitchen. You know, you're, that is administration. Risk management, including legal and ethical issues. I imagine this is the area of administration that is growing more and more as we, as churches have to wrestle with issues of bathroom policies and children to adults ratio and things like that and all the other legal issues that come into church Uh, church duties now, along with ethics and also risk risk management, hiring and things like that. I imagine this is an area of administration that is growing more and more. Keeping the office running. This is the part of administration that I think everybody can initially think about. Hey, you're the person who's sending emails and uh, scheduling events, or not scheduling events, scheduling meetings for the pastor and taking phone calls. Like That's all administration. And similarly, you also have the area of finances, probably one of the biggest areas of administration for some churches, like a multi-site or a mega church is going to have a multi-million dollar budget. And it's going to have, you know, areas of all this money is being pushed around and all this type of stuff without making it sound like, you know, money laundering. Um, So you have this area that definitely needs administration, definitely needs wisdom, definitely needs foresight and knowledge in order to run. And finally, personal management. That's your own office hours. That's your you scheduling counseling with people. That's you uh, doing things like your sermon prep and your writing and um, making time for hospital visits and, you know, having a good work-life balance as well, because ministry is work. And although a lot of times for pastors, they don't get much of a personal life outside of ministry, they they should have a level of 
office hours where they can kind of leave things be. So again, what we see here is that ministry administration is a church word, is a religious word that is you are coming alongside of a minister to get work done. You're coming alongside a pastor, of a priest, uh, an elder, a deacon to get work done. And you know, again, depending on the church size and what kind of church it is, you may have more need for more administration than a home church or a small group. But at any level of ministry, there is a need for uh, logistics and thinking out logistics and planning budgets and making sure all the ducks are in a row. But not just for the sake of business, 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 but for the sake of making sure that ministry is being effectively done. Our final section of our, it, it, it's weird. We have a new program that we're doing this class on. It seems like we're not just here to learn how to do business admin, or excuse me, ministry administration. That definitely speaks to how this word has been used. Um, but we're also learning how to use a whole new platform for our education. It's a lot more interactive. It's more blog posts than forum posts, papers. So I think part of the intention of this class is to teach us how to do stuff like that, how to write blog posts or how to present something in a way, you know, almost like writing like a like a flyer or a handout or things like that. So it might be helpful to me. I'm not very tech savvy. The f I've said it before. The fact that I can run a podcast is shocking to me. Although, actually, this is the second time I've had to record this episode now because there was some tech error that wouldn't save my episode the last time, and I'm worried, really worried it's going to happen again. So let's see how this goes. But finally, in our fancy blog post answer, we had to talk about the etymology of the word church and parachurch. So as we know, the Greek word ecclesia is translated in our English Bibles as the word church. And literally in the Greek, it means gathering of people. It's a gathering of people. Um, and if you want more in-depth information on the church, just head back to a couple episodes ago, What is the Church? They did a whole episode on it during Systematic Theology 2, um, which, by the way, I'm really happy that I'm in a class that seems a lot less strenuous than what I was doing in Systematic Theology 2, but we'll see if my tone changes by the time we get to the end of this class. So a church is a gathering of people, but what we find is that the word church the English word church actually originates from the Greek word kurios, which is translated as Lord. And para uh, derives also from the ancient Greek, meaning alongside. So a church is a gathering place of people for the Lord, for the worship of the Lord. And a parachurch is a ministry that works alongside the gathering of people to worship the Lord. So, Parachurch is actually very closely then tied to the word administration, that it's this idea of coming alongside to get ministry done. You are the helper. I think of Adam and Eve, you know, you are the helpmeet in administration, in parachurch ministries. You are coming alongside the ministry, the minister, the pastor to get work done, to get ministry done. And I think about that in terms of my internship, like I'm the guy who does all the grocery shopping for the uh, youth group snack bar or in uh, our small group. You know, I, I do I plan out the lessons and the series we're going to do. And there's a little bit more give and take because we're a small group. So I can pitch them like, hey, these are the ideas of what I think we should be doing. Um, and there's back and forth. But administration, logistics, thinking things out, running a budget. You know, these are things that, sh you know, the bigger the church, the more they're going to be prevalent. And can an administration become an idol? Of course, everything can become an idol eventually. It's you seizing control over a ministry after all. But we should not shy away from administration. We should not shy away from thinking things out. Because with administration should come effective church ministry as you are coming alongside the work getting done. And that's it for this week on our seminary part. So let's head on over now to the my life part. Last week was spring break and it snowed twice. 
So there's that. Um, today is our baby shower, and I'm excited to hang out with a group of women all day. Well, it's not all day, for a couple hours. That's what a baby shower is, after all. Did it once already with a bridal shower, so here we go again, hanging out with a group of women for a couple hours. Why not? Um, it'll be all right. It'll be fun. My mom's excited. Her first grandkid, so she's excited. Um, yeah, I think that's really all that's been going on lately. So yeah, thanks for dropping in for this episode. If you haven't already, please, if you haven't done it before, check out our Facebook and Instagram at My Seminary Life Pod, or you can um, engage in things like our weekly Facebook question. I pose a question on Facebook, sometimes related to the episode, usually related to the episode. There'll be one coming out on Monday related to the episode, I think. But uh, I recently did one on what do you think the Garden of Eden would have looked like? And one of you listeners chimed in and said that you have this idea that pre-flood, not even just pre-fall, but pre-flood, everything would have been much more um, colorful, much more brilliant, much more almost tropical even. And you know, today I'm recording this on a dreary, rainy spring day. So I guess it's not spring yet, but it's a March day. It looks like March outside. So if you're listening to this on a dreary March day and it's raining outside, just picture that. Just think about that for a little bit. And make sure you're checking out the show on there. If you haven't before, please uh, rate and subscribe this show wherever you're listening to it on uh, it's Spotify, it- or iTunes. Forever going to call it iTunes, Apple Podcasts, um, wherever you're listening, please consider uh, subscribing to the show and rating and reviewing to it on there. Thank you There's to all of you. There seems to be a recent bump in listeners. So, and I thank you for uh, dropping in and checking this show out. And I hope you stick around for this next several weeks on administration. We got a couple fun things in the pipeline next week. Yes, next week, next Wednesday, we have the one-year anniversary sh- special is dropping. Going to be talking about some of the highlights of the year already. Uh, also going to have my wife on the show to talk about Lent. And speaking of Lent, we also have a special one more thing coming out the following Wednesday. Bunch of bonus episodes here featuring Nathan Drake of Reawaken, we- Reawaken Hymns talking about their newest project, Hymns of Lent. So we're going to have a little two episode stint on Lent while also celebrating the one year anniversary of my seminary life. It's been great. It's been a fun ride. We're going to talk about that more next week. Uh, I think that's it. Oh, again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always email the show. Email seminarylife at gmail.com. Email seminarylife at gmail.com. Let us know if you have any questions that you would like me to answer on the air. Also, You can also use that email to answer this question I'm about ready to ask you. I want to continue to grow the show. And there's a couple different areas that that I can do that. But I can't do everything. I'm a one-man gang after all. So I'm trying to feel out what would be, again, using some administration tools, administration mindset here, what would be the next best thing to introduce to you all to grow the show more. Not just putting it on more platforms, but to have another area where you can learn, know, and experience God more in your life. And I was thinking, and let me know, email me, drop into the comments on Facebook and Instagram for this episode. Let me know, would you be interested in a Patreon? I'm kicking around Patreon. If you're unfamiliar with Patreon, think PBS Pledge Drive. Each month, you pledge a certain amount of money. And in response, I give you some bonus content that can be behind the scene videos. I don't know what that would look like, uh, but that could be behind the scene uh, videos. That could be bonus exclusive episodes, exclusive blog posts, uh, polls. It could look like a lot of different things. And obviously, financial support for the show would be appreciated because higher education is very expensive. Um, textbooks are expensive. So Financial support for the show would be appreciated. And I would like to give you more. I would like to do bonus podcast episodes. I'd like to do blog posts. So let me know. Email me if you're interested in supporting a Patreon. Reach out to me somehow. Voice memo on Anchor. Whatever you got to do. Let me know what you think. All right. Well, that's it for today's episode. Thanks for hanging in there. And as always, keep on studying. (music) 